Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm up on the downs with some Ilford 3200. I'm going to mill around here, take some photographs. Meanwhile, I'll show you what I've been up to with shooting this film at different speeds and in a couple of different developers. This is Ilford's Delta 3200 film. It's a high speed film and if we jump onto the Ilford's website, they'll tell you all about it. They say it's the world's fastest black and white film. Not sure what Kodak P3200 think about that, but never mind. They say it's the perfect choice for any difficult available light conditions. An unobtrusive grain structure with a wide tonal range and it's ideal for low light action shooting, obviously being a 3200 speed film. Now, to be honest, I don't often use a 3200 speed film for my kind of photography, but I do always have a few rolls in my stash just in case I do need it for that football match or something like that on a, on a cloudy day or or if one of my mates says to me, can you come and take some photographs at the karate club, which is a little bit low light in there, but I need a bit more speed. Something like that would be perfect. So I always keep a little tiny bit of Ilford F3200, uh, FB4, 3200 in my stash just in case. In fact, it's probably out of date because I haven't used it for so long. In which case I'll put it in the freezer. I've read quite a bit from people saying it's actually a thousand ISO film and it's, um, it's been designed by Ilford to be pushed which is great. I don't know the technicalities of it all. I'm sure Ilford guys know what they're doing. They're putting 3200 on the box, so let's shoot it at 3200, eh? And of course, in those situations, if you ain't got one of these films, you can always take a 400 speed film and push it uh, to get a little bit more speed out of the camera. Of course, we know that that's going to come at some price of grain and uh, a lack of tonal range or a punchy looking print or image. And talking of price, this is also more expensive than FP4, HP5, Pan F. If you look at the prices, you've got Ilford FP4 at £6.48, Ilford Delta £7.81, HP5 £6.48. And then this stuff comes in at £9.76, so it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but I don't find this is the sort of film I would shoot all the time. And they say it's a very versatile film. It's apparently got a wide latitude, which means you can underexpose or overexpose by a couple of stops accidentally and still uh, get usable images. And it also has a wide tonal range as expected for most Ilford films. In fact, Ilford say that you could shoot it at 400 and even at 6400 and still get decent results. I'm not sure why you'd want to shoot anything past 6400, but uh, I'm not going to be trying that in this video. So here I am, I'm up on the downs. Uh, I've got the Nikon F5, a 28mm wide lens. That's all I'm going to be shooting. And I've got the film inside the camera. I've set the camera's meter to 800 ISO. So everything I'm going to be shooting uh, effectively, I'm going to be pulling the film. I've already done a few little metering around here where I'm going to be taking photographs. And my shutter speeds are well, 640th of a second and above at f16 so you know for once i can come up here shoot comfortable without a tripod and get some nice funky positions tripods can sometimes limit you a little bit uh, on your compositions so that's what i'm going to be doing let's have a little walk around and see what we can get the sun is out but it's also going in and out of the clouds there's quite a lot of cloud up there so quite a nice day i'm on aperture priority mode so i don't need to be creative with the shutter speed i know that it's going to be far more above than what my hand was my hands gonna shake at anyway so all I need to do is concentrate on what aperture I want and that's great I've got the uh, camera set to matrix metering so it's taking everything into account at the moment I've got 400th of a second f16 that sun's just gone in a nice depth of field going on here bang shot done It's my favourite tree look. Now normally when I'm up here I've got a tripod or a medium format maybe. But I'm handheld so I can get loads of different compositions of it. Especially with this wide lens. Yeah, it still looks the same. I haven't been up here for ages. <laughs> oh yeah, what a sexy looking tree. Although I'm on aperture priority mode, I'm actually still controlling the camera somewhat because when I'm looking up at the sky, it's taking everything into account. I don't want that tree to go dark. So I'm just coming down towards the grass and locking my exposure 
hitting a shot. When I looked up, it said 320th of a second. When I locked my exposure down, it said 200th. So uh, that's going to um, counteract the, the cloud of the sky a little bit. And you've all seen this beauty before. I've got a few shots left in the camera. Come up here, not too far away from the downs. Take some photographs. So a friend of mine on Instagram, Crimson Obscura, he sent me a brick of this stuff to play around with and I thought it would be a good opportunity to go out and see what I can do with different shooting this at different speeds and in a couple of different developers. I've chosen ID11 because that's a developer that I often use. I'd be interested to see if I can shoot this at 3200 or 6400 and still get decent results in ID11. And I've also got Ilford's microphone and it's supposed to be a decent developer for this film. It's designed for pushing film. I was thinking about putting this in Rodnoll, but then I decided it ain't going to work. Rod Rodnoll is going to be too hard for this, and my images are just going to be trashed, I reckon. I'm not even going to go down that road of Rodnoll, so sorry Rodnoll users. So for my first experiment, I wanted to shoot this film at 3200. I used the Leica MP, and I went down to the local farm where the lambs were being born, and I wanted to shoot this at 3200. This only goes up to a thousandth shutter speed, so I was pretty much maxing the camera out outside. Um, but I also went inside a few of the barns as well to take a few shots. And when I got back, I developed the negatives in ID11 at stock for 10 and a half minutes. And as expected, I got grainy images, but it weren't ugly grain, you know. It wasn't so bad that it, it, it finds its place, in, I suppose, in certain photography, certainly not landscapes, as I've said before but I quite like the images that I came back with. They were a little bit punchy, I found, and the grain was there, um, but they were, it was pleasing grain. I didn't mind it at all. The next day, I went to the woods and loaded another roll inside the, the Nikon F5. I'm using these cameras because the light meters are mustard on them. Um, you know, I just get great results every time I shoot them. So I wanted to make sure that I was getting my exposures right. So by using those cameras, I know they're going to be bang on. And this time, I wanted to see how the film held up shooting at 1600 and developing it in ID11 for nine minutes. Don't forget, this is my regular developer. So it'd be great if I can use that all the time with this film. It was quite nice for once to go off in the woods, do some photography without having a tripod because of the 1600 speed I was using. I was able to get apertures of kind of f11 f16 so I was getting this nice large depth of field in my photographs now being woodland photography you're hardly going to notice any grain you'll more no notice grain in skies and anything white such as white cars or whatever that's where you'll start seeing the grain so when a busy photograph uh, comes out of woodland or something like that you're not really going to notice the grain unless you go right up close to the print but who does that and these photographs came out really nice but I do feel that they was a little bit on the flat side with the contrast and I felt nine minutes wasn't long enough maybe I could have gone 10 or 11 minutes and just boost that contrast a little tiny bit but it's good to experiment with these things and play around I then wanted to see what the film would do at 800 speed now don't forget I could always take HP5 and push it one stop it ain't so bad when you're doing that but um, let's see what happens with this film if I I shoot it at 800 and for this I went down the beach uh, late in the afternoon and took various photographs of where I was the scans weren't that great I must admit they're not attack sharp um, <laughs> I didn't take photographs that great on the scans but you get the idea and I'm also shooting 800 speed so I'm still handheld and I'm getting decent apertures you know sort of f8s f11s uh, in the conditions that I was at I was quite happy the grain wasn't that bad actually at 800 and I reckon that the grain is better at 800 than it would be pushing HP 5 to 800. I went back to the farm and I decided to shoot a lot of low light stuff which meant all of these uh, tractors and machinery was all inside barns and sheds but I did have to make sure there was enough light coming in. I, you know, his photography needs light. So I had to make sure there was enough light coming through, but not too much. It was just very subtle. And uh, so I tied this out at 3200 and 6400. I came back and I put the whole lot in microphone at nine minutes. I just wanted to see how the 6400 held up at nine minutes. 
it's meant to be 12. And they come out really nice. I was surprised at the uh, the quality of these photographs that I got in microphone at 3200. You can see for yourself, the grain is there. It's not horrible, it's nice grain. And uh, this has got bags of tone as well in some of these photographs. I've got bags of tone going on. So that really is a nice little setup, I think, 3200 with microphone. Um, in these kind of lighting conditions. The 6400 uh, in nine minutes of microphone, I found that that was a little bit too dark really. It needed to just be boosted a little tiny bit microphone. Uh, Ilford, sorry, recommend 12 minutes. And I know that some of you enjoy going out shooting at night. It's not really my thing because where I live on a sleepy island, not much happens at night, apart from vampires flying around and they're in the shadows anyway. But uh, I decided to go down the beach uh, where it's quite lit up at night. Not many people milling around, but I went down there and to try and, to try and take some photographs with this 3200 in a nighttime scenario. If you're in a big city or whatever, I should imagine this is fantastic. It's so busy, there's lots of things going on, but where I was, there weren't blood, nothing going on, you know? So I just took photographs of objects that was being lit at night. And uh, again, I did that at 3200 and 6400. This time I came back and developed 3200. Nine minutes microphone and the 6400 side of the film, I developed for 12 minutes so overall I enjoyed shooting this film I did feel like the lower speeds were not quite to my taste with them looking a little bit lifeless but the grain was not as bad as I'd expect from say pushing FP4 or HP5 maybe I can experiment with longer development times to suit my taste I think microphone gave a more pleasing grain than ID11, but not so much that I would be concerned using ID11 for this film. Ilford do recommend it. And this is definitely not my film for any skates, but I'm looking forward to taking a few rolls out on the streets and trying it out and see if I can get some nice gritty street images, taking advantage of the faster shutter speeds and smaller apertures, which is where I think this film would suit me best. Saying that, there is the extra price to consider. So I hope you all enjoyed this video guys and as always it's good to try out films and developers and see where it suits your own style of photography. A massive thanks to everyone that supports the channel, have a great weekend and I'll catch you next time. Oh and I was only joking about the vampires. See ya!